Uh, thank you very much for introducing me, and uh, I'm very honored to be here so to share my experiences and to exchange our opinions. So thank you very much. So now <coughs> I'm work working in Shanghai, China, so as a general practitioner. So, but uh, originally, so I am an emergency and critical care physician in Japan. So, and uh, I studied uh, emergency medicine, especially disaster medicine, including combat medicine or incident medicine or uh, war field. Mm, traumatology and uh, at that time so I also learned the uh, emergency ultrasound so it was a very exciting and a very important memory for me so I thought it was very precious experience to bring it back to our country <coughs> Mm -hmm. uh, there is no COI with regard to this presentation. So I studied at the University of Texas Systems, uh, Texas State in the United States. Uh, University of Texas is one of the largest universities in the United States. You can see the, how big this university system. So it is called public IB. So state established university, but the level is the same as IB leagues. One of the branch of University of Texas is UT Southwestern Medical Center, uh, where I belonged. So UT Southwestern Medical Center, we say uh, UTSW, it's established in 1943. So we have uh, five educational hospitals, but uh, affiliate hospitals, so number is countless. And uh, students are around 1,000, and the faculty is um, around four times. So we have a lot of educators in the UTSW, and the UTSW has a huge lab. So this is a picture that I taken from the uh, small airplane. So although I did not pilot, and we have uh, five Nobel Prize winners. They are also working in the UT Southwestern Medical Center. So maybe this is the uh, largest number of Nobel Prize active winners all over the world. Among the uh, affiliated hospitals, so one of the biggest is Parkland Memorial Hospitals. You may know this name. So this is very famous with uh, the Sibia Ban Treatment Center. So you can see the Parkland. So this mark means uh, uh, Parkland formula for Mm, severe burn patients. So the volume of ER is also uh, one of the biggest one uh, in the United States. Annually, so we got uh, around 15,000 ER visits only for Parkland Memorial Hospitals. So you know, so we have uh, uh, five educational hospitals in the UTSW, but only one had 15,000 patients in the ER. In this situation, so I studied emergency medicine. In those days when I belonged to the UTSW, emergency medicine was one of the division of the Department of Surgery. So now, emergency medicine is an independent department. However, emergency medicine division 
had an established residency program for three years to resident physicians. And so we have some fellowship programs. Among fellowship programs, emergency ultrasound was already established in 2012. So you can imagine emergency ultrasound has established as a subspecialty of emergency physicians. In 2012, so <clears throat> I was a researcher of the uh, section on government emergency medical security services, so like uh, uh, disaster medicine and the homeland security of the United States. But I had a lot of time to study, so I took some other courses. One is toxicology and one is emergency ultrasound. This was the first time I met the emergency ultrasound in the United States. Of course, so uh, I had already more than 20 years career in Japan as an emergency physician. So I always used ultrasound to scan, to diagnose, to treat the patient in the ER, sometimes in the ICU, or when the rapid response system is activated, I bring the ultrasound machine to the general ward to use or to triage the severe patients. When I was resident or fellow physician, my senior cardiologist or gastroenterologist or radiologist taught me how to use ultrasound, how to interpret it. But it was only on the job training. I had no established training course. I just used in the practice. I just learned, I just studied in the textbook or what senior said. But when I studied in the United States, I met, I encountered the established educational system. Today, so I'll talk to you guys about the established educational method in the United States. As you may know, effectiveness of ultrasound in the ER, so it was realized in the early 90s, but it was not disseminated to each ER, even in the United States. In 1999, American Medical Association released the, such a written opinion. So it is called Code 802. In this document, there are many, many important sentences. For example, so this is document uh, has a style, whereas, 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 and resolved, resolved, resolved. So whereas we know how effective ultrasound we use in the ER. But many of physicians do not use. Why? Resolved. So established education is needed. AMS said such a very important thing. As a result, after released this written opinion, everything was changed. So many educational university hospitals make a section for emergency ultrasound or clinical ultrasound or point of care ultrasound. And 
start to educate resident physicians. Moreover, educate medical students, nurse practitioners, and physician assistants. That was a turning point. You may know American College of Emergency Physicians, ASEP, published the policy statement. The first one was released in 2008. After that, so it was revised regularly. The newest one was released in 2016, but the paper was released in 2017. In this policy statement, we can see all over about the emergency ultrasound. In this document, so emergency ultrasound is defined as on this slide. It writes for diagnosis or blah, 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 by uh, physician on in the bedside. Let's talk about the detail of this policy statement. This policy, uh, policy statement is consists of nine chapters. So you can see nine items. So introduction and conclusion, so uh, those can be excluded uh, from today's topic. But, uh, so very important is uh, scope of practice or training or credential or something. So uh, let's talk about it. The first topic is chapter three, training and proficiency. So it can be replaced with the term of educational system. This is the theme of the uh, weekly conference of emergency ultrasound section. So we, <coughs> we all see the display, uh, big television display, and uh, uh, resident physicians reviews it and uh, interpret it. And, uh, um, in the lower low uh, faculty check uh, whether it was right or not. When we educate something, we have to fix what kind of education is required. So SF says, for applications. So this is the goal that resident physician must complete. In their career of residency program, it's within three years. They have to scan each item for at least 25 cases, maximum uh, it's uh, hopefully so 15 examinations and uh, totally more than 250 cases resident physician must scan in their residency program. This is the minimal number uh, 150 or each 25. At first uh, airway and uh, ocular were not included. In the newest policy statement, these two were added. So change with the evolution of uh, technology or uh, our practice. In the case of UTSW, uh, they have a um, resident physician must rotate eight weeks for section on emergency ultrasound. Within eight weeks, they have to 
complete more than 160 scans. It's not a small number. It's hard. Uh, during the rotation, residents have a normal duty in the ER. Additionally, they must scan 160 examinations in eight weeks. And uh, within three years, at least 300 scans. So not just scanning, all must be reviewed by faculty. And uh, once a week, we gathered resident, fellow, faculty, and review it, whether it was right or not. So this is the correct number. When resident meets the goal, so as I told to you guys, the number of scan is very important. Not only that, but also uh, they have to pass the oral examination during the conference. So all time faculty ask something to resident physician. So resident physician can, must answer correctly. So if he or she failed, punishment will be given. So uh, in the case of my boss, so we all of us must push up 10 times <laughs> in the conference room. So after the conference, so I got myalgia. So that was a hard day. So uh, that's why so we educate so hardly to young physicians. <clears throat> and also they must pass the paper examinations. So this is the uh, original paper examination. So uh, paper is leaned to the one side, but the original one is uh, also leaned. So this is not my fault. So uh, accuracy it must be over 80%. So I also passed the paper examination and uh, I was recognized as a faculty. And of course, so attend a journal club once uh, bi-weekly. Not only the uh, resident physician, but also fellow physician uh, must achieve the goal. So this is a uh, meeting, uh, meet, met the goal. Uh, in the case of fellow physician, uh, they must scan more than 800 examinations per year. So fellowship program is uh, just one year program, but uh, in the one year, so 800 examinations, so it's too hard. Oh. Their duty is much more than hard. So fellow must educate resident and the fellow must treat the patient. In addition, they must complete 800 examinations. So that's hard. So uh, that's why the quality is assured in the United States. Uh, let's move to the next chapter, uh, chapter five, quality and ultrasound management. Emergency ultrasound director. So he has a lot of duties. So he, is, uh, he was my boss. So uh, this photo is taken uh, in the front of Osaka Castle. So he's usually a very funny guy, but uh, in the workplace, he was so serious. 
uh, because he had the right, uh, given the right from the department chair. So he must manage everything about emergency ultrasound. He must raise up young guys. He must maintain the system. He must develop the educational system and practice system. So he is so serious. Quality improvement process. So it is also important. So because we have to evaluate the image when we review the patient. And uh, we have to provide feedback. So it must be done immediately in the real time. So sometimes the <coughs> uh, resident does not attend the conference at that time. So we call by the phone and say your image was not good. Your interpretation was not correct. Sometimes uh, we record the uh, movie films and send it file as a file by uh, cell phone. Anyway, uh, immediate feedback is required. Uh, this paper is used in the uh, UTSW. So when resident scan something, so they fill out the name of patient why he does scan, what site he does scan, what interpret, final diagnosis and the prognosis resident physician must fill out it. When we hold the review conference, we refer it and decide it was correct or incorrect. So this is reviewed at the section on emergency ultrasound, but you may know Faculty of Emergency Medicine does not always be correct. So even faculty must be debuted by somebody. So in the UTSW, these data, including images or movies, everything was sent to the Department of Radiology. And the radiological staff recheck it. If our decision was incorrect, radiologist gave us a feedback. This is a circle of feedback. And uh, <coughs> in one year, we reviewed more than 15,000 cases. So one conference continued more than five or six hours per week. So it was held on Wednesday. So since 6.30 a.m. to the noon. Well, yeah, 6.30 a.m. early morning. So Tuesday, so I have to go to the bed very early time. And next topic is uh, U.S. machines, uh, safety and maintenance. So we have mm -hmm. oh, sorry. We have U.S. machines, but we use it anytime, anywhere. So, who take care of this machine in the ER? Who? Maybe in the Department of Cardiology, 
so cardiologist takes care of it. In the laboratory room, technician takes care of it. In the ER, not only emergency physician, but also cardiologist or gastrologist or radiologist use it. Sometimes, U.S. machine is contaminated by body fluid of the patients. Sometimes, riot guy dropped the probe. Sometimes, oil of machine step over the probe cord. When, in the case of the emergency, we will be worried about the malfunction of U.S. machine. So, assign the personnel to maintenance. It must be fixed. Perhaps clinical engineers or nurse leader has to the duty. Next topic is clinical U.S. leadership in healthcare system. So, leadership, so, it can be um, interpreted to how to buy, how to negotiate with the vendor. So, you can imagine it's not good to buy various type of ultrasound machine in the ER, we should focus on one kind of machine. So it makes our budget will be decreased, expense will be decreased. But, so if the vendor is limited, so vendor may be cheat us. It was a terrible thing. So we have to negotiate uh, well. ASAP can provide the educational course for U.S. leadership. So in this course, uh, U.S. director can learn how to negotiate, how to buy, how we can negotiate how we can, um, uh, how to say, how we can buy with a reasonable price the machine. So it is very important thing. When we purchase the U.S. machine, so we have to refer the checklist. Uh, in 2018, the textbook is published by the ASAP. Uh, ultrasound program management. One of the editor is Professor Michael Brevas. Uh, he is uh, one of the leading physicians on POCAS. In this textbook, when we buy compact card based ultrasound machine, so these are very essential to check. So, uh, card based machine must have a large screen and the monitor must be uh, with a multi-articular arm and we can see the display and other colleagues can also see the display. Uh, sometimes patient can see this display. So it is very important. And the keyboard must be retractable. So because keyboard is easily uh, contaminated and if contaminated, so it's very hard to clean again. So uh, this keyboard must be retractable. And also the machine must have the space to hold the, some probes. As I told you, so uh, riot guy 
has a tendency to drop it. So, you know, uh, probe is very expensive product. So, um, machine must have a space to contain it. According to the pole arm mounted ultrasound machine, so it's like an iPad. So <coughs> Uh, this machine has non-raised knobs and buttons, so we can easily bring it to the bedside or uh, outside of the hospital, and uh, it must have enough battery life. So, uh, ideally, it must be last for three hours, and uh, recharge time must be less than one hour. <coughs> so this is a necessary system and equipment. Uh, when we summarize uh, these kind of opinions, stuff, stuff, space, these three words are very important. Uh, who is the director? Who must be managed? Who must be administrated? And the stuff, so what kind of machine? what kind of review system we have and the space so where we have to store the machine and where we use it. This is very important three components. So we have to remember these three words uh, when we promote the focus. Thank you very much.